All right, guys, this is going to be part number two of the Popeye Restore. We're going to start working on the cabinet and stuff. Um, I did find on the first video I had shown how this circuit board here was cracked and missing a piece. Um, I found it in the bottom of the cabinet. Here's what broke off of it. Now, by the looks of this, um, let me rotate the monitor here. Hold on. Okay, by the looks of this, it looks like I can fix this. But I found this, I was lucky enough to find this buried in the bottom of the cabinet. But if you look at it here, let me try to uh, set the camera up in a way that I can kind of show you. That it looks like if I, I'm gonna have to get the tripod. There's no way I can hold this and do that. Okay, I unplugged it so I can get it up higher, but by the looks of this, it looks like I can fit this back together. Solder this back together here. And we have two traces that are broke. One here and one right here. So it looks like I'm gonna be able to solder this back together and make it work. Um, I don't know what happened to it at some point, but I think we're gonna be all right though. So not too big a deal. I think I'll just bridge this whole area with solder because it looks like all four of those pads go to the same tra uh, trace. And then we just need to bridge these two traces back together there. Scrape the green stuff off, the green coating, and we'll be able to fix that. So, okay, we'll leave that off to the side. This monitor is currently drying. I'm gonna stick this little piece of circuit board up on my counter so I don't lose it. Okay, while I have the monitor or the camera low to the ground, let's see if we can't scrape the rest of this uh, laminate off of this wood. Or at least most of it, we could sand the rest off. This happened on my uh, Donkey Kong Jr. cabinet as well. Got some on the top edge here. Might have to kind of sand the rest of this off. It is slowly coming off. Try to keep this knife away from me so I don't stab myself. That's why I'm working away from my body. All right. I got most of this off. A little bit left right here. Try not to dig into the wood too bad, so I don't have to do a bunch of body work to it. Um, I was able to get this all off. That's just somebody had painted that. So we got a little piece left right here. That's all glue residue. That'll sand off.
Well, chip the wood a little bit, but we'll fill it in with a little bit of Bondo. Okay, we're done with that. Except for, let me get some sandpaper. I'll just get that sanded down now real quick. Okay, I'm gonna use some 80 grit sandpaper to knock all this glue and everything off. Okay, when I mix up filler for the other parts of the cabinet, I'll just fill in this nick and that nick right there, and that'll be good. So now let me set the camera up and we can start um, sanding down the side of this cabinet. Okay, so I'm gonna start sanding down the side of the cabinet with some 80 grit sandpaper. continue to sand the rest of the side down and then we'll mix up some filler and fill in the spots on this side okay I blew off all the dust and wiped off the cabinet I don't know what that material is on those cabinets that blue but we're gonna mix up a little bit of body filler here um, I think there's some left in that one this is the stuff I like to use when it's small areas um, I get this at um, O'Reilly Auto Parts you can also order it online. Um, but we're gonna hit all the spots on this side and then I can flip the cabinet around and start sanding the other side while this side's drying. And also we gotta put a couple, a little bit of this stuff on that uh, front piece that we stripped the laminate off of. We gotta fill in those couple nicks. Might have to open up a new one of these. Let's see how far this gets us. A little bit of hardener in there. And don't stir your stuff, mix it. Flip it over. When you stir it, you get a bunch of uh, air inside of your body filler and it creates pinholes. But you want to mix it up thoroughly until it all is the same consistent color. I probably won't get this primer tonight. I'll probably have to primer it tomorrow. I got a few things I got to go do tonight, but I'll at least get this video started and I'll finish it up tomorrow morning and we'll get it in primer so that we can get this thing painted and in the house. So let's go over to here now. You can see how well I sanded it down. Let me try to back this away a little bit. Okay, I wanna concentrate on these bigger areas first, right here on the back. We're just gonna let it kind of droop over the edge We'll have to put more than one coat. But I don't care if it hangs over the back edge. We'll sand that by hand with a sanding block. I'm 
like I said, the cabinet's actually in pretty darn good shape. No rot or anything like that. Hasn't been wet at least, or if it has, it hasn't been bad. Okay, and now we have like some little nicks here and there. Um, right there scratch it in with probably their key they were probably mad at Donkey Kong probably sucked at it like me There's a couple little spots left, but we'll get that when we do the second coat. All right, so now I'm gonna spin the cabinet around and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna get it sanded down, then we'll come back and fill in some more. Okay, I got this side sanded down, so we're gonna mix up some more filler. Now, this is the worst spot that I was telling you guys about. This is actually like a chunk is missing out of the back here. We're gonna use fiberglass filler for this area, but um, obviously I'll have to do that separate. Let's mix up some of the regular filler first so that we can um, fill out all the smaller areas and get those out of the way. This is a new tube. This one still has a little bit left in it, but I have to kind of let it sit there and work its way down. So after I get done with this, I'm going to see if I have a dowel rod so that we can um, fill in those couple holes in the front from where that lock bar was, get those pounded in there and cut off. Then, we, and then when we mix up some fiberglass filler, we can put it over those dowel rods and on that back corner of the cabinet. Put a little bit more hardener in here. restore these games I try to get as much of the parts here before I start working on the cabinet so that I can just get it done unfortunately almost every cabinet I'm currently trying to finish I'm waiting on something uh, waiting on some wiring for Wizard of War I am waiting on artwork for Dig Dug um, I think this cabinet I have everything for oh wait no the artwork will be here next week for this And I'll probably maybe get the sides printed tonight for this, so that's ready to go. I like to get some of these wrapped up and all put together. Kind of just have a bunch of mess around the basement right now. I think I'm going to add to the arcade this summer another four to five feet from one of the other basement rooms. I might knock a wall down and move it back so that I can fit a few more games in there. Why not, you know? Let's see if we can get 70 in the basement.
didn't mix up enough, but that's okay. We'll do another coat and we'll get the rest of the spots that I missed. Just trying to get the heavy big areas with the first coat. Because some of these other spots probably only need one coat. All right, I'm gonna clean this up and then we'll uh, see if I have a dowel rod for the front. Okay, I have this dowel rod. It's a little bit fatter than the hole split right here so i'm going to cut it down here we'll cut two pieces off and then we'll take it on my bench grinder over there and see if we can't just take a little bit off to get it to fit into the holes since it's split, but we could see here that we're just a little bit too big. So let's go over to here and see if we can kind of grind these down a little bit. Oh boy. Wow, that went quick. Use this side. See if this is enough. That wood's only about a half inch thick, so we don't need this whole length. Let's go see if that works. It's close. A little bit more. Let's go take a little more off. I need to have a little bit of room for the glue to fit in there. tap it in a little bit okay good let's uh glue these up i'm gonna take a hair more off of this one real quick okay let's uh get these tapped in place Now I'm just going to go ahead and cut these close to the cabinet. Okay, let me go grab my grinder so that we can uh, grind those down. I want to make it grind them so that there's a little bit of a divot into the wood. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this glue off. I'm gonna grind this down and put a little uh, fiberglass filler on it. I'll show you what I'm gonna use for that.
Okay, good. Now we have a little divot on both of these so that it'll accept the fiberglass filler. And also we got to put a little bit on that one back edge that is chewed up and missing. I'm not too worried about the back edge because I don't plan on beating on it, beating it up or anything like that in the future. So it should be fine. Um, what I'm gonna use is this Bondo glass. There's a little bit left in this one and I have another container of it, but it's just called Bondo glass. I honestly think I just got this at Walmart. If I remember correctly, it's been a while since I bought this stuff, but I think that's the cheapest place around. There should be enough in here to do what I need to do. If not, I'll have to open that new container, but this looks like there's plenty in here. That should be enough. Still a little bit left in there. So we're gonna mix this up the same we did with the other stuff. Put a line of uh, hardener on here. This takes a little longer to cure than regular filler. This stuff's real fast, the U-pull. So I usually put a little bit extra hardener in this stuff so that it dries. But this has um, little tiny strands of fiberglass. You see how this will just stay there like that? See how long that just stays because of all the strands of fiberglass that are in it. So it works good for building up little areas like that back edge. But just always make sure you guys thoroughly mix this stuff. Because if you don't, you'll have spots inside of your filler that won't cure because there's no hardener mixed in with it. So let's go ahead and get these two bolt or these two holes in the front filled over first, and then we'll fill on that edge. The reason why I like to use this out of these holes is it um, it tends to bond over the the dowel rod and the wood around it. So it kind of puts like a coating over top of all of it and it doesn't shrink. Like if we just put regular Bondo on here, um, chances are in a month or two, you're gonna see a ring in your paint where that dowel rod was because that regular Bondo will sink in. It'll shrink and you'll see that ring. This stuff is kind of like bonding over the surface and having that short strand fiberglass in here, it kind of creates like, um, it's like you're sticking a, a piece of laminate over top of it and you're, you're spanning over it and filling it in. So I definitely recommend using this stuff for stuff like that. And now we gotta fix this back edge over here. back of the cabinet. I mixed up too much of this stuff, but whatever. So this is going to be a little tricky because we're missing on the inside edge. Now I'm probably going to have to make a back door for this because it doesn't have one. There was someone selling a back door on eBay. I asked the guy for the measurements two days ago and he said he'd get right back to me and never did because it'd be nice to just buy one, an original one, but he only wanted like 60 bucks for 50 bucks. And the length of this, I'm gonna have to buy a whole sheet of plywood, which is probably gonna cost me 50 bucks. So I would rather just get a door that already fits and not waste the time of making it. If I'm gonna spend the same amount of money to buy some wood, but I don't know, he must be just a flake or something on eBay. He's, he's local too, he's only about an hour from me. I don't mind going and getting it. But, Nothing but crickets. One response, and that was it. So apparently he's not interested in selling it. I don't know. Okay, this looks ugly, which is fine. And what we can do is, after this dries and we sand it, we can go over it with regular body filler then, regular Bondo, to make it look pretty. I just, my goal right now is to just build this edge up so that it's the same all the way down.
So we're just gonna leave it like that. We're not gonna do anything else with it. Now, I'm gonna go get my cutoff wheel and we can um, cut these staples on the front and get this front panel put back on. I'm actually see if my little grinder here will just work. Um, I might make break this into two videos, this bodywork stuff, because uh, it might take a little longer than I thought. So I might break it up into two videos. So what I want to do now is grind down all these staples that are hanging out of the cabinet so that we can fit that front piece back in there. We can glue it back in and put new staples into it. safety glasses on. Ah, that burns. Okay. All right, we got all those ground down. Doesn't look like there's any sticking out of this. So now this is gonna go back in here and we will staple it in correctly. And we got to fill in these screw holes. Just want to see if it fits. Okay, good. Before this was hanging down like that, somebody screwed it in too low. It needs to be up like that, flush with this side on each side. Um, missed a staple. Both sides. Okay, broke that one off. Okay, looks like I can break them off. All right. So I got to go get my stapler and my glue and we'll get this put back in and then we can fill in those holes. Okay, I have some one inch staples here, which should work good. Hopefully I don't blow through the front, which doesn't look like it. I think the front's five eighths. So let's get these loaded in here. Gotta get some glue. Man, I put the glue away. Let me go grab the glue. Okay, I want to try to squirt a little glue down here. Let it kind of run down for a minute because that block's a little bit separated from the cabinet side. So I'm kind of hoping I can get some glue in there. Maybe we'll tap it in with a hammer. Yep, that worked. Beautiful. Now, Get some good glue on here. I'm not going to put glue on the bottom part. I might just throw a couple staples in from the bottom. You're never going to see them because they're just underneath the edge. So I just want to get some good glue on this. You got to kind of work quickly because it's all going to run on the floor if I don't. Put this up in place like that. Now we should be able to staple it. Maybe we should start with the bottom here. Since I have to do a little bit of body filler in the front here, I'm going to put two staples through this way. I could get another one in. Figure I got to fill it anyways. Might as well just make it sturdy. So there we go. That is fixed. Um, this side's ready to sand. So let's get on that side, let's sand down those spots, and then we'll mix up some more filler so that we can finish the spots on that side and get all these filled in. Okay, I'm gonna spin this sideways again. Start sanding these down. Plug this back in. I'm 
I'm going to use 180 grit. Should be all I need for this filler. mix up a little bit more we'll fill in these spots again I'm not gonna sand this down yet let's just fill in a little bit more and then we'll hit it with, with a hand block sander and also I want to get make sure I put a little bit on these nicks on this so let's go get some more filler mixed up now as you can see I've only been working on this cabinet now for about I would say about two and a half hours I'm into this um, you know it's very easy to get one of these cabinets torn apart, body worked, and primered in a day, if you want to. Um, there's really no reason not to, you know, unless you just enjoy, you know, taking your time and stuff like that, which there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, if you want to just get it done, just focus on it and just knock it out, you know? Like I said, I could definitely get this primer today, but I have some things I want to do this afternoon so we're just gonna primer it in the morning tomorrow um, finish up any little bit of body work probably gonna videotape for about another 20 minutes here then I'll probably just release this as part two and then tomorrow morning we'll do part three of any final body work and sanding I need to do and you know we'll sand the inside of the cabinet and stuff too which we'll probably have to sand the inside of the cabinet twice. We'll probably knock it down real quick tomorrow just to get a bunch of the dirt out of there and we'll vacuum it out. But after we primer and paint, I'd like to get back in there. Well, you know, probably before I paint, I'll sand it one more time and then we'll just tape it off real good so we don't get a bunch of blue overspray inside the cabinet. Because these cabinets were not painted, so we don't really want to get blue overspray inside the cabinet. We want to try to keep it as original looking as possible and obviously they didn't have overspray in the cabinet so let's go ahead and fill this in some more um, i'm going to do this board first so i don't forget and we will put a bunch of filler primer on here tomorrow and what that will do is fill in the grain from the wood this is like uh, maple or something, some kind of a wood. Maybe, maybe not, maybe, I don't even know. It looks like it has almost like a maple uh, grain to it, but not quite sure. I'm not real up on my species of wood. This has got a little bit of a nick on the back side here, so we're just going to fill it with this. Let it ooze out like that. If you're wondering why I didn't wipe the cabinet down again, that uh, sander with the vacuum hooked up to it 
pretty much gets all the dust off of it. There's only, there's only a tiny bit. One more coat around these edges here. Oh, and I have the parts in the tumbler. I put new media in the tumbler. Desert blend. Oh boy, I put too much hardener. This is already dried. Um, desert blend. Uh, walnut shells. This stuff is almost completely dry. Get it on there real quick. I think we're all right now. Okay. So now I'm going to clean this up, spin the cabinet around. Let's sand that other side. All right, let's get this fun. into a piece of 80 grit because that fiberglass resin doesn't sand well with 180 grit so we're gonna go with an 80 grit a little bit rougher this is partially used but it should be fine um, I used it for that front piece um, so now I want to knock that down now remember these edges back there you see how all this these, this filler is hanging over don't take your DA sander and start sanding that edge what it does is the way that this rotates like this it literally will take this filler and rip it off the cabinet. So then you're just starting over again. You'll take a hand sanding block and go up and down rather than a circular motion. And that'll keep that from happening on you. So let's sand this down. It's dry. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, now we can mix up some more filler again. Now, if you look here, you see how this fiberglass, the hole's right in the center there. And because I put a divot in the plywood, you see how this fiberglass goes over and it's right now it's perfectly flush. You can barely even feel it. But we're gonna put a coat of filler over top that's a little bit wider and blend it in. Now, this is what's gonna help keep this from shrinking back on you and seeing a round circle in a year from now or whatever it takes. So let's mix up some more filler and we're gonna get quite a few spots filled in now. Um, if you look here, see how we have an edge again? Clearly, it looks like crap. It's sticking out past the cabinet. This little tiny bit right here doesn't look like it's sticking out past the cabinet. So we're gonna put a little bit more filler on there of regular filler now, this uh, glazing putty and straighten that out. So let me go mix some up and then we'll come back and put some more on. Okay, I'm mixing up some more filler here. I gotta try to work quickly because uh, that last batch started drying on me. It's 70 degrees in here, so it's a little, the warmer it is outside, you can either A, use less filler or work quicker. I like to use a little, not filler, hardener. I like to use a little bit extra hardener, not a lot. You don't want to use too much hardener because you'll make this stuff brittle and then it's pointless. But um, I like to try to get it so it just dries real quickly, you know. This stuff is a very fast drying product. So right now I'm filling in that screw hole on each side and those staples that I put in there. And then we're going to put a little bit over top of this. Nice smooth coat. And the smoother you guys spread this stuff, the better off you'll be. But you see how wide I spread that over that hole? What that's gonna do is give me a nice taper from the blue to the filler. I don't know where the camera's at. Let me move it up a little bit here. I'm trying to work quickly. I wasn't really planning on getting this cabinet done this quickly, but I did, it was kind of stupid to take it out of here and put it in the back building and grab a different one. I think we're about good on this side. This side, I still haven't sanded it. But I know that I had missed some spots. Oh, I put a second coat on it, sorry. That's where it is. Okay. I ran out. But we're looking good. We have just about all the nicks fixed on this thing. And I really, like I said, I, I haven't stopped the camera too much. So this is pretty close to how long it's taken me. Now you guys, you know, just work at your own pace. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Don't let anybody tell you you're doing it wrong or you're taking too long. It's your project. You take as long as you want. I'm a hyper person and just likes to get stuff done. Not everybody's like me, you know? So just work at your own pace and you'll get there. You'll get it done. Okay, let me clean this off and then I wanna show you guys something. Okay, while that's drying for a couple minutes, I wanna sand this all down the sides and the front tonight. And then I'm gonna stop this video. Tomorrow morning, we'll come out here. We'll sand down all the black area, the top, the back, inside the cabinet, and then we'll get it primered. Um, this, look at how filthy this is. I took all the power supply and everything off of this so that we can get all this sanded and cleaned. That's just nasty, never been cleaned. Um, same thing with the bottom of the cabinet. Look at how filthy that is. That's just gross. But by sanding that, that's going to clean all that stuff up. Now, um, I took the power supply. Um, I took the cover off of it. Took the isolation transformer, um, the electrical socket for the um, plugs for the marquee light and the um, monitor. And I put them all in the sink here. And I, I um, sprayed simple, simple green on everything. And 
it's dr currently drying right now, but this was completely black like those boards. Look at how nice and clean that is now. Um, this is the power supply. I cleaned off the circuit boards. Look at that, brand new. So I'm just kind of letting them, I'm gonna let them stay in the sink tonight. Um, just let them dry. It's gonna be days before this thing's even powered up. By the time that happens, this will all be dried and ready to go. I don't know if the power supply works or not. I'm guessing it does. I think these Nintendo power supplies tend to keep working. It doesn't look like any of the caps are um, bulged up or anything like that. So, all right, now I am gonna stop the camera for about 10 minutes while I let this stuff get set up. And then we're gonna get these three sides sanded and then we'll call it a night on this. Okay, let's start sanding these down again. <laughs> I got a piece of 80 grit on a block right here, so I want to start blocking this down. You can see how this looks jagged right now.
have this spot on here left. Almost done with the body work. So that is going to wrap up part two. Um, tomorrow we'll get the back and inside and stuff sanded down. Every all these little nicks in here fixed. There's a uh, one here, one here where the screw didn't cover all the way that old screw hole. So we've got a few more spots to go over. We'll wipe it down and look over it real good. Then we'll get it in primer and then. Uh, 
probably Friday, we'll go ahead and paint it. Oh, I need to make, see these little cleats right here? There's supposed to be one on each side of the cabinet for the monitor glass. And I only have one of them. So we're gonna have to get a piece of 3 8 plywood tomorrow and make another one of these so that we can put it here and on this side. So we'll make another one of these tomorrow that matches this one and we'll paint it black when we paint all the black in the cabinet. So, all right guys, that wraps up part two of the Popeye Restore. If you guys are liking what you're seeing, please like, subscribe, any comments or anything, feel free to send them. Uh, questions, I'll answer everything that people send me. All right guys, thanks for watching. You have a good night and I will see you guys tomorrow.